there, I'm Danica Quinn, and you're watching Falco K9 TV for September 2011. Coming out of August and into September, we've really gone back to our roots with back-to-back -back police canine academies. Handlers from the Coachella Valley area, Long Beach, and Covina areas have been busy training their dogs and learning about how to work with the police dog cross-trained for detection work. In the middle of all that, we've also trained a new bed bug detection dog team in Dan Varner and Skeeter, along with his business partner, Rob DePass. They were certified and only five days later, they were performing their first job at an apartment complex and Skeeter, good old Skeeter, located the hidden bugs in one of the apartments. Yay, good for you. She alerted the handler to a phone jack cover and once removed, they found the bugs that they would have never found without her. Our pet dog classes are in full swing on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and as a matter of fact, we had to add a second session on Saturdays at 11 a.m. They're just so popular. In this edition of Falco K9 TV, we'll introduce you to one of our new trainers, Elias Galvan. We will interview a community partner in training of our police dogs and detection dogs, an interview with Jeff Kay of the Desert Sands Unified School District, who's been contracted with Falco K9 SSI, and of course, the best part. Andy and I will talk about all things to come at Falco K9 Academy. Hi there, I'm Danica and I'm standing here with Elias, who's a new dog trainer here at Falco K9 Academy. Welcome aboard, Elias. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I am a dog trainer for a dog rescue organization. It's uh, iCareDogRescue.org. Um, I started, me and a couple of friends got together and we started. Uh, it's an all breed rescue. And you met Andy through this I Care Dog Rescue, correct? Uh, one of our dogs came in for uh, training for bed bug detection, and I came in to see how he was doing. And you know what? I saw what a great training program they got, and I started as an intern, and now I got hired to work for Falco. And it's the best place that you've ever worked at, right? Yes, yes it is. All right, so tell us one more time the website that people can go to for your organization. It's I Care. Dogrescue.org Dog Dog mm -hmm. It's on the bottom of our screen here. And also one of the things that you have to offer besides a whole litany of things here at Falco Canine Academy, you also speak Spanish. Yes. So you're able to help Spanish speaking customers mm -hmm who maybe, you know, if English isn't their first language, you're able to, to help them out. Can you say a little something in Spanish to our viewers? Venga a Falco, donde recibirá entrenamiento para el ser humano para su perro. Sounded good to me. <laughs> All right, thank you, Elias. <laughs> I'm standing here with Nolan. Nolan, you work for Child to Cherish. Indeed. And you guys actually help out Falco K9 Academy by yes, letting yes. them kind of use this warehouse and this space uh, for their dog training. First of all, tell me a little bit about this company. Our company is called Child to Cherish. We were established in 1987. Um, we manufacture baby keepsake items, uh, kind of like no novelty type items. We have suitcases, plaster hands and tin cans, uh, bug banks. I mean, there's so many different types. It's so of cute! Items I've have. seen some of the items. Yeah, They're so adorable. We um, we're we're in stores all around the world. Um, we sell to you know some celebrities here and there and, and stuff like that. So really it's, cool. it's a cool business, yeah. And we're getting the behind the scenes. Yeah, look this is here. this is the warehouse. This is where I work. I pack all all the orders with my coworker Fernando. So nice. Yeah. So what led you to working with Falco Canine Academy? Um, honestly, I mean we're we're all from Brea. Um, we know that it's a canine police training, you know, establishment, and we really enjoy kind of giving back to the community as much as we can. So we thought it was a cool opportunity to have, you know, a local, a local business come in and use our establishment to kind of, you know, help them train so they could actually go out and, and fight crime, help of the police department. So mm. it's kind of our, our way of giving back to the community in a sense. Yeah. And if you too would like to contribute and give back to the community, you know where to find us at Falco Canine Academy. I'm sure in post they'll put the number or the website or the web address rather on the bottom of the screen. What is that called? Lower third? It's a lower third, a yes. Chiron. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, look at you fancy at schmancy. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much oh, for, no for giving back to thank the community you. and for helping out Falco Canine Academy. And guys, check out Child to Cherish. Yes, please do. <laughs> Uh, so, Jeff, uh, what is one of the, uh, the reasons why you decided to, to use detention dogs at the school? 
uh, detection dogs were in use when I got to the school district about three and a half years ago, but it was a, uh, uh, a vendor that um, I wasn't real pleased with their service, not the company itself, but what they were doing for us. Uh, my background in, in uh, narcotics enforcement is quite extensive, and I ran a, uh, I supervised a drug dog for about five years in a uh, very busy narcotics task force, so I knew what I was looking for in terms of uh, the service itself and the reporting procedures and uh, especially the evidentiary procedures after something was located. So I started looking for a different vendor um, to just take care of our needs. Okay. Have you found that uh, detection dogs are a good deterrent for narcotics in schools? Yeah, it's an excellent deterrent. As a matter of fact, uh, according to the kids we talked to, it's the number one deterrent um, for them bringing contraband to school. Because we don't tell them what they can find. You know, we tell them they can find everything. So some of the kids think if they don't do their homework, the dog's going to know about it, you know? Uh, but as far as guns, knives, uh, drugs, the kids are scared of the dogs, so. What about any controversy in regards to um, any rights uh, violations, being, whether it's from the parents or the, uh, the students themselves? We've had a couple of them, but the uh, students all get a student handbook at the beginning of the year, and they sign for that, and the parents have to sign for it. So in our uh, Ed Code, our Board of Education Codes, it says right there that canine detection services uh, might be used on any campus. So they know about it going in. Uh, so we've, we've had very few issues. What about from the school district itself as far as the teachers, the administration, uh, anybody that doesn't like the dogs or has any problems? No, we get 100% support, especially after um, the teachers see the results. They feel a lot safer in the classroom and they actually welcome the dogs in. Um, what about uh, Falco Canine SSI altogether? What has been your uh, experience with our company? It's been great. I actually cut back the canine service quite a bit before I uh, contracted with Falco just because I just wasn't happy with what I was getting. Once uh, Falco took over, um, it's, it's a pretty phenomenal program, especially since they're local. Since you guys are local, we can go uh, on call stuff for graduation, dances, football games. So if we, if, if we need them, we call them and they show up. Would you recommend uh, Falco canine services to other school districts? I would. The reporting, uh, the re the reporting procedures are what I like. Uh, I shouldn't say best, it really helps me out because I have to do a quarter of the report to the school board. So it, it, it's right there for me, it's already done. I don't need to do anything else but make copies of the reports and do statistical analysis of what was, not, not so much what was found, how, how often we've done it. Uh, I think the biggest, the, the biggest um, advantage of the canine is not what they find, it's what doesn't get brought in tomorrow because of it. You know. Great. Um, in regard to uh, other detection services such as explosives detection, do you see that as being useful, guns, ammo, that kind of thing? Yes, a good example of that is we had a bomb scare at uh, La Quinta High School last year. And uh, we had to evacuate the whole school. La Quinta High School is like a small city. There's 3,000 kids and the faculty and all. There's probably 4,000 people on campus at any uh, given time. The Sheriff's Department canine, their bomb dog was coming from Riverside. So we had about uh, an hour and a half to two hours uh, delay, so we would have had to close the school. You can't keep kids in the heat for that long, evacuated. Uh, the Falco K-9 was on call for us. Uh, they were there in about 10 minutes. The uh, sergeant from the police department was in our command post, met with the K-9 handler, reviewed his certification, and he was happy to let the dog uh, run on the suspected device. And we cleared that whole thing up in about 20 minutes. And awesome. we got the kids back uh, in the classroom. So Jeff, tell us about your experience and what led you to be in uh, where, where your position is now with the school district. I did uh, 24 years of law enforcement in Reno, Nevada. I retired from there and moved out uh, here to the Coachella Valley. And uh, in my years in law enforcement, uh, mainly worked undercover operations and narcotics enforcement. So when I was looking for a canine detection service for the school district, I knew what I was looking for. And we've expanded the um, canine program quite a bit because of the service we got from Falco. We incorporated middle schools uh, starting this year uh, into, our, into our program. The middle school principals are pretty happy about that. Did you know it was going to be 117 degrees when you moved there? I did, uh, <laughs> but it was cold in Nevada, so I just wanted to go someplace where I didn't have to shovel snow again, and it worked. Yeah. I'm here with the lovely Andy Falco at Octopus Sushi Restaurant, yes. one of Andy's favorite restaurants here in Bray. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Octopus? Yeah, I love these guys. Every time I come here, they uh, make me a great lunch. Um, it's always tasty. It's the best price for sushi that I've been able to find. It's right here in Brea, right down the street from our office. It's at the den in uh, Burt Street. And uh, there's an opening because somebody just dropped all the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's looking for a job. Uh, but uh, no, it's a great uh, place to come. I really love it. I come here often. It and, is uh, delicious. James is one of the, the, the chefs that I often uh, find here when I come here and uh, always makes my food uh, taste great. 
Yes, I concur because I just ate lunch and had the most delicious roll. So and I hear the beer, if you were to drink, I don't drink beer. Of course not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's very tasty. I've, it's I've nice heard it's very tasty. On a hot summer day, it's very cold. I yes, so thank you, Octopus. Thank you very much. So Andy, I've been watching you run around here like absolute madman. <laughs> Ooh, which is my favorite television show, by the okay. way, Mad Men. Um, but I've been watching you run around like crazy. You must be exhausted. It is. It's been tiring. we got these academies just running back to back and uh, with the police dog stuff, doing and all the decoying, getting these dogs ready for the streets uh, can get it a little bit challenging, but it's been fun. We have a lot of academies going on. The uh, Bed Bug Detection Dog Academy, of course, was going like in the middle of all that. Um, but uh, between the Long Beach guys and the Covina guys and the Coachella Valley guys, uh, it has been very, very busy. And it's been hot. That's it's good. In the middle of summer. <laughs> I know, right? Especially yes. here in California. Well, we went to Palm Springs yesterday and it was 117 degrees, so. <laughs> Andy, I've also noticed a few injuries that you have. I think Dan got a close up earlier. Yeah, I'll show up. Ouch, that must have hurt. What happened? Uh, you know, it has to do with uh, decoin. I mean, you, um, we have people that we're training for decoin. So, one of the things I always tell them is that, you know what, one thing you have to know for sure is that if you're going to be decoying for police dogs or security dogs, that at some point you're going to get a, a scratch or a bruise or something like that. So, that's just the, uh, the nature of the job. You know, decoying and getting these dogs ready, you have to put yourself in a little bit of a position every so often that you might get hurt. So, on occasion, I get scratched or bit. I got bit on the derrier. Yeah, I know that you want to see it, but I'm not really going to show people what it looks like. <laughs> but uh, Kane came in, and I thought he was going for the sleeve. He decided that he had other ideas and went for my backside. And, so you, were, and you put me in the dog bite suit, <coughs> knowing full well this could possibly happen. And I'm a fragile, delicate little flower. And... I'm just, I'm appalled, but I, I really, I hope that you've iced these things. They're your battle yeah. scars, they're your battle wounds. Yeah, so. chicks like scars. Yeah, of course, <laughs> we all do, we all do. We have a lot going on with our pet dog classes. Tell us all about that. We do, it's uh, been just crazy. We've had to add classes, as you know. I think you mentioned that uh, earlier, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I think that uh, with the economy, uh, we give you a good value for our pet dog training. And I think since people are staying home a little bit more often, they're not going on those long vacations like they used to. Uh, they're spending a little bit more time with their dogs and they want to get their dogs out and uh, socialize them, maybe go order something at the Starbucks or Schlotz Easy or something like that and make sure the dog doesn't get into a fight. Yes, um, yes. And so that's what we encourage. We want people not to just put their dog in the backyard and forget about them. And so this, uh, you know, gives them an opportunity to train their dogs so they can get out and do some fun stuff with their dog. Go hiking, yeah. go to the beach and that kind of stuff. So I think the economy in some sense has kind of helped that side of our business, but it really is a good thing because yeah, uh, it gets people into our class, gets the dogs stimulated, socialized and that kind of stuff. So yeah. we're really busy on that side. Oh, I love that. I'm happy that you're incorporating more pet dog classes as well. Yeah. You have a new trainer here, uh, Elias Galvan. Did, yeah. did I say his last name? Yes, Galvan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. He's coming around uh, to our system. The good thing about our trainers is that when they come in here as interns, Andreas Kalani, who is our lead dog trainer on Saturdays, mm -hmm. Elias is going to become our lead dog trainer on Wednesday nights, and then of course on our privates and our in-homes and that kind of stuff. So it's great to have these guys on board. We've trained them from the ground up. They didn't come here necessarily as just dog trainers. They came here as interns doing other stuff, and we were able to train them into our system. And I think that our system is so far above everybody else's. That's a little conceited, but it is. I mean, no, it is, success. absolutely. And uh, I, I like the fact that we were able to uh, teach them in our system, which uh, you know promotes humane training. Uh, mm -hmm. It promotes socialization and leadership of the handler, not using any harsh methods. So uh, these guys are going to be fantastic. You guys do it all. You do it all. And you're, you're everywhere. Last week you guys were at Super Zoo. Yep. What, what is Super Zoo? Super Zoo is a trade show for anybody in the pet industry, whether it's dogs, cats, lizards, parrots. Um, it, but 75% of it, I think that might be, that number is just my guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's that 75% is mostly dog stuff, like dog food, dog collars, dog equipment, dog treats. Uh, and so we go there to make sure we, we're keeping up with the trends mm -hmm. and we give people what they want. So it's important for us to go to see what's happening out there. It's so great to hear about the work that Falco Canine Academy is doing, uh, or, uh, excuse me, Falco Canine S. SSI is doing with schools. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we uh, developed our security company, which has uh, three detection dogs that are cross-trained for patrol. And one of the great uses is uh, of going into the schools and searching for narcotics. And uh, as much as we may hate to admit it, you know, in our public schools, we do have a narcotics problem. Uh, and these dogs are, are going in there to do searches of uh, lockers and backpacks and, and uh, making sure the teachers also, you know, are are staying clean and, and good for our kids and it really makes a difference. What we have found and what Jeff pointed out in the interview is that uh, when asked 
uh, when they've asked the children what it is that has deterred them from bringing narcotics to the uh, to school, uh, their their number one answer is the dogs. You know, the school resource officer doesn't do it. The uh, teachers telling them just to say no doesn't do it. But the detection dogs, not not knowing when they're going to be there, uh, uh. keeps them from bringing it in. So we think that's at least the, the the first benefit. We'd rather not find any drugs at all. Right. You know, but um, we do find drugs and they have been confiscated and taken out of school. Uh, but the fact that we're keeping people from bringing it in, whether it's uh, you know the, the children or anybody else, I think that's obviously a positive. Do you do random pop-ins so that the students don't know when they're going to be searched? Yeah, based on when the school uh, the school district asks us to come in, we, we respond, So, but it's often. It's not like once a year. Yeah, well that's good. Off. You guys are definitely headed in the right direction. I think so. Thank you very much, Andy. Here's to a an even busier October, yeah. if that's possible, because you're already crazy busy, exhausted <laughs> to begin with. But that's good. Hey, there's always room to grow. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, on the count of three. One, two, three. Later, dog. Bye. Later, dog. Later, dog. Later, dog. Later, dog. Later, dog. That was a sexy strut. <laughs> ah! oh, mama, please help me. Mama, Mama, please. <laughs> wow. All right, choke him up. Seven. Fast. He's going to go right to the pool. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't realize. He may need help. He may need help. Stop busting the dog. No. Better help him. But Hugo goes like this. Woof, 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 woof,